Hello everyone, welcome to Club Reaction 2, St Mern now Rangers 3, eh, job done and that's really about it. I am Scott Carney and I'm joined by Scotia. Scotia, how's it going? Hi Carney, good to be back. Um, an awful lot's changed since I've been away, but not much has changed either. <laughs> the same, you know, it's, it's kind of in the same place, but I a lot went on when I was uh, away in my travels, but um, good to be back and speak about the game today. Yes mate, it's good to have you back. Uh, that that performance today did absolutely nothing for my raging hangover that I have. Uh, that was just so pedestrian football, it really is. It, it, it doesn't change anything, I don't think, in the grand scale of things, the way where we are as a team and the, the players that we have opinions on, very strong opinions on, I don't think it really changes much. But Rangers did go and get the job done today. And there's certain parts of the performance where I think you can be pleased with. There's other parts that, again, just still kind of baffled you, I suppose. Uh, the start of 11, mate, was Butland, Tav, Goldson, Suter, Barisic, Lundstrom, Raskin, <clears throat> Sifuentes, Seema, Roof and Lovelace. Good to see Lovelace coming in, mate, but there was still, obviously, the the usual rumbles about um, Tavenier, Goldson, Lundstrom, um, Barisic, to an extent, all, 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 um, all starting. Yeah, no, i seen that and I was looking at the, when i seen the what, following the B-team game yesterday and i seen that King and Divine were um selected for that team i was like right well that means tav and goldson are going to be playing wouldn't have been the team i picked you like i would have had king and divine in there probably would have you know had the Elmas starting and yeah Lundstrom, i would probably have bailey rice starting uh, but like you say good to see uh lovelace and um, get a start i didn't expect to see that i thought maybe it would go away mccausland uh, again because mm-hmm. he came on and affected the game quite well and then thursday night there but um well he didn't affect it well because we get beat. But you know what? He came on. He came on and he showed. He showed good promise and things like that. Um, but no, good to see Lovelace starting. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a, a welcome change, I think, into the starting eleven, and he was by far the brightest spark for us in the first half. Uh, and it was him that won the uh, did fantastic work down the right hand side to get the cross in in order for the penalty to come round. <clears throat> just, it's a, just, a, it's such a shame for him um, that he, he took a, he took a real bad one after. I'll come, I'll, we'll come on to that, I suppose. But the goal itself, mate, um, Lovelace does really well, um, really, really well. I think um, just shows what freshness can do, what a bit of desire can do, mate. And I thought he, he, it was really good work by him. Uh, and the referee makes the right decision. It's a, it's a blatant handball. It's stopping in a. You would like to think Seema was going to put that one away. It was the correct decision, and Tavernier does. But, have will do. <laughs> he'll be playing poor, but he'll still score penalties. Yeah, no, the desire, like you say, the desire shouldn't be lovely. It's a few of the other players in our team can then kind of take some notes off him and start playing playing like that. If they did, then we probably wouldn't be in the situation we are. Unfortunately, like you say, yeah, it was very, very bad that you get um, that injury later on. But yeah, like you say, we'll come to that. Yeah, yeah, we'll come to that. See, we do, as you say, but really up to then, we weren't the, the first 25 minutes or so, but there wasn't really much in it. Look, St Murn were coming into this game fancying their chances and rightly so. They've started really, really well, but I didn't really see much in St Murn today. I thought they were I thought they were quite poor. Um but again we were we were just as poor, but I think you you know what I mean by that. Um but yeah so, so we will I'd say after we took the lead though, um Lovelace gets a it's just so unfortunate. Um, he's kind of in a battle in the uh, Gogic and he just pulls his hammy, it looks like, mate. And he's a really slow one. You can see the devastation in him. Uh, I mean, if it doesn't sum up Rangers' season, mate, I don't really know what does. It's kind of the perfect summary of how we've been. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It didn't look like a great... I, in fact, did I see this? I didn't see the injury itself. I was down making myself some square sausages. Um, so as I pop, pop, pop back up, I just seen that he was um, hobbling off the pitch. And then he was down for ages. And like it looked... So mm-hmm. I've not seen like the replays back or anything of it. But the fact that they didn't even use the stretcher, they waited for the, the trolley from like, the back of the ambulance to come in. Take him away. It looks like that's a bad one. I mean, I think you messaged the group chat saying about eight weeks. I don't know that might oh, be, easy. could be longer. Could be longer than that. Um, which is a, 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 like you say, it is a real shame because we want to see these youngsters come through. You know, we've had high hopes for Lovelace over the last mm-hmm. season or so. Um, certainly last season he was he was knocking them in well for the B team, um, and he was one of the only ones that was affecting the game for us today. Um, uh, up to that point, you know, just before the penalty, he'd put in a great um, ball across the, the face of the St Mirren goal. Um, it was unfortunate not to get anything from, and I, I was, show, like I said, showing loads of desire and hunger. And then um, that's pretty much right now, I think that's where every Rangers fan is. That's just what they want to see. Players mm-hmm. showing a bit of desire, dig and 
passion to play for the club because it feels certainly on Thursday night it did not feel like any of the players that night apart from like as I mentioned McCausland maybe Seema to a point were shown any desire and that's that's all we're asking for right now because we're in such a in such a bad place. Absolutely, mate. I couldn't agree more. I think that's all the fans are looking for, mate. A bit of, a, a bit of, um, a bit of pride in yourself in terms of being a player and wanting to play and wanting to do the job that's necessary for um, for, for wearing the jersey, mate. I think that's all we asked for. And yeah, like Lovelace was great. Um, says a lot, I think, that McCausland was then turned to as well um, after Lovelace had to go off. It was McCausland that came on. Again, a positive move I, f- I felt from Steve Davis to do so. Um, I thought that was, when I seen it was him, I was like, brilliant. I'm glad he didn't go with Lammers um, and he, he did just go with, with McCausland. And I, I, I say it was, <clears throat> it was good to see that. However, you you would think that St. Mungan down to 10 men in the state that Rangers have been in recently that it would maybe spark something and it didn't really at all. It was an extremely turgid watch for the rest of the half yeah. with very little happening at all. Um, we didn't we didn't take advantage of them going down to 10 men and it all became a bit safe, Scotia, I think, for the rest of the half. It, um, we just didn't look like there was anybody really willing to take the risk. Yeah, I mean, we started, we went to that kind of place that we do. I hope we'll come on it when we go to the second half because <laughs> that'll be a fun discussion. But um, <laughs> we were just controlling the ball, passing it about. We didn't really create any chances. I don't think uh, Ruth um, had a shot and goal. Like, uh, the striker didn't have a shot and goal, I don't think. Um, yeah, it was it's this kind of the shell that we kind of go into when we're 1 0 up. I don't, the only other chance that I think I noted in that. Um, that second half was just before, just an injury time in the second half. Yeah, Raskin, Raskin. probably he should, should score. Should have made he it. should score. Yeah, should, probably should have made it too. But no, it was poor, and that we have we've kind of skipped past it. But um, up until obviously the boy uh, Strain gets sent off for that handball, it was a bit of a frantic game, but not end to end. There wasn't really any clear cut chances, but it was mm-hmm. you know it was flowing to and between each team, and um, I think they get uh, Goldson got a booking in 11, 10 or eleven minutes, mm-hmm. and. You know that what that worried me because unless until up until uh, the boy gets sent off, that's a concern that you've got your your centre half's got a yellow card within say ten minutes because he get he get done absolutely skint by um, Kelty, um for that and um yeah but like you say coming into the end of the second half mm-hmm. it was like I <laughs> not really getting enthused by the way the Rangers are playing. No, I said the first half. Yeah, you're probably right up until the. I think the second half felt like it lasted for five days, mate. That's probably why I'm forgetting the way the game started, because yeah, to an extent it was a wee bit frantic. I thought Connor Goldson looked really shaky today, um, up until obviously the, the sending off. It does it does change the game. It completely changes the game. But as I said, there was nobody really making clear cut chances. Um, and I said either Raskin one, you're right to mention that he should score at the end of the half. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Again, that all came from a lovely little knockdown from um, McCausland. It was the youth players that were making the making the real impact. Uh, into the second half, mate. Um, I mean, do we have to discuss it? <laughs> Honestly, uh, <laughs> it was horrible, man. Honestly, just <laughs> this, this, just everything that we know is wrong with the team. This pedestrian football. It was walking pace at times, mate. Like, and all we were doing was we were obviously up. We know the final score now, yeah. But during it, I'm going. All we're doing here is giving St Mern confidence. Do you know what I mean? Because they know they'll probably get a chance to get themselves into the game, but. Up until the second goal, mate, that the performance in that second half was just oh, so turgid to watch, mate. It was really no pace, no drive, nothing. It was just, it looked like we were holding on to a 1-0. Yeah, like I was saying there, when we were kind of turning into our shell at the, towards the end of the the first half, the second half was even worse. We didn't come out and play St Mirren. It didn't look like they had were down to ten men. It looked like they had eleven players on the pitch with the amount that they were cut. They, they weren't causing us any serious problems, but you know that way we, we weren't doing anything with it. We were just passing side to side, slow. I mean, this is these are all issues that we've spoke about before with Rangers. And like you say, I don't think I've got a note up until like the hour mark of <laughs> anything that happened in that game. I think just before the sub for the roofing guessers coming on, I think McCausland puts a good ball into the box and then Tav just heads it. Heads it wide, but once again, there we're speaking about McCausland, a youth player. Yeah. It's his what is this his third third mm-hmm. game for Rangers, maybe? Um, obviously the weekend or midweek there, and then he's maybe made one or possibly two other kind of sub appearances last season. 
But um, it's, it was them that were affecting the game for us. Um, yeah, it's it's not a good watch. I can uh, and Ali text the group chat asking how are we playing, and it was like, I no well. You just you kind of know what you thought you knew what was coming because all it would take is for St Mirren to get one chance, and then we would be. <laughs> this wouldn't be um, an, an enjoyable pod mm-hmm. to do. No, I agree, mate. If I mean, if someone had scored, I don't think we would have got a reaction at all from these players. Um, but yeah, it did feel like you felt like something, not something was coming, but you just felt like you've kind of seen this movie before, uh, I think. Yeah, you mentioned the substitution on the other mark, mate, with Ruth coming off and Dessers coming on. Kamal Ruth was awful today. He wasn't in the game at all. I think he touched the ball maybe twice. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I don't think any striker had a shot on target. Um, well, <laughs> Dessers did um, later on. Do you need to? Um, but it was, yeah, it was rough. He wasn't really in a bit. Was, he wasn't getting much service. I know the, like, the, the balls that we were putting into the box from fullbacks and stuff, they didn't come at anything. They didn't reach reach the striker. It was more, Seema looked more like the striker than Roof today. Yeah, he, was, he wasn't great. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. But 71 minutes, mate, we do make it to. Um, Tavernier sends the ball into the path of Raskin uh, and he sets up Seema with a, a really nice a really nice cross ball. Uh, a really nice ball across in between the two defenders across the face of the, the face of the box, if you like, and the on the on Russian Seema. Uh, really tidy finish, I thought. Uh, makes it to. And at that point, mate, I just went, thank you. I just thank you just for one stranger's thank you that I'm I, I'm not going to have my Sunday ruined, basically. Yeah, that's that one that's like 2 0 game. You would totally like to think that's game, game yeah. over. You would like to think, yeah. but with a Rangers team, you never know. But no, it was a, a really uh, well worked goal. Yeah, I thought I thought, I'm going to give Desser some credit here. It might be the first time <laughs> he's ever been given credit. <laughs> Are I think Desser does. <laughs> yes, I think Desser does well to like kind of pull the defenders away. Like so, the defenders are focused on him as the attacking option, and the, the Kenny he pulls them away, allowing the pass from Raskin then, or the pass that, or the over ball that comes to Raskin to then slide it through to Sima and well worked finish by Sima. Um, I think is that um, Sima either scored like eight, in his six starts goals. or something like that. Yeah, eight six goals, starts, yeah, uh, eight goals, six starts, and he scored in each of the starts. So um, I, I know with Kenny. We've slated Seema at times, not slated him, we've maybe been frustrated with Seema at times. Um, I think he's, he is that type of player that he, he will frustrate you, but that's a good goal return from him. And he's at, like, like we, you'd met you and the boys, or you and Ryan had said um, in the game Thursday night there. Um, you know, Seema's one of these players that he has shown a bit of desire, you know, along with the youngsters. Uh, I agree, mate. I agree. You can't really argue with um, his stats, and as I say, he's, he is. He's we're getting a good return out of him. I don't know whether it's because of the, the rest of the new signings have completely dropped off, but he's one that's probably took a wee step up. I think in terms of his performance levels, I don't. There's not many that have got complaints about Seema just now, and I suppose you you can't really. The guy. Again, with the same thing you said, mate. He's he's trying. He's he's showing effort. He's showing that he wants to do this. He's showing that he wants to he wants to play here. And him and Raskin today, I thought were the two of the outfield players, including the the youngsters, were the two um, of the the first senior team, if you like. That I thought were were fine. I thought they were they were just fine. And say the rest, I'm not particularly not particularly um, full of praise for any of them. To be to be honest. Um, Dessers, mate, you mentioned him. <laughs> you see, you've just praised him, and I'm about to criticise the guy. He's through <laughs> one on one. He deserves he's through, it. Yeah, he's through one on one here, mate. Nobody, nobody that of a Rangers persuasion believed that he was about to score. Um, I, in my head, I did say to him, I was like almost muttered to myself, "Go on, like score," because I think this is a player shot of all forms of confidence. And if I'm going to be completely honest, mate, he's just not a very good footballer, and he's a signing that I just don't understand. It's a it's a really really tame effort by him when he should be he should be busting the net here really. I need to table though again. See, because of the how Kenny turns as we were in this half, mm-hmm. I was Kenny. You know that way when you've got the football and you're watching it, but you're not really watching it. You're kind of looking at yeah. your phone and things like that. Aye, I was the I same, was mate. Thinking, yeah. I was doing that an awful lot, which I don't usually do with Rangers games. Usually Rangers, I'm like glued to it completely, but just the way that we're playing right now, it's kind of like, oh, I can do this on the computer and then put my <laughs> head up and the commentator says, oh, something's happened kind of thing. The way that I probably watch most other, you know, I've all probably always got a game of football on the TV if it's on. 
but mm-hmm. not fully paying attention to it. Um, that was maybe mm-hmm. the way I was playing, uh, watching it today with Rangers, and certainly in the second half. Um, but yeah, Dessers, <laughs> where do we start with the boy? He needs to score, and it's not even like I don't even think like a goal is going to boost his confidence. It's just no, he doesn't look very good. And like we were, I was pretty optimistic about him in the summer, going like, I no, we had this good spell at Feyenoord um, in the Europa Conference League, done this, done that. But um, so you try to find like decent things that you can get about a new signing because otherwise mm-hmm. it's like a mugs game. But um, I was poor today when he came on. Um, no movement. The only good, as I said, the only good thing he had done, I think, slightly well, was pulling that defender, Kenny. Out his position for our second goal, but that's not really what you want your strikers to be doing. You want your strikers to be scoring these guilt-ed chances that he's been given. Yeah, he's just not very good at football. I don't think. I, I, I can't really. I can't really see a future for him. I can't, as I say, he should be doing so much better there. Uh, and I was saying, mate, I, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, we could get something. There could be something in this guy um, when we were signing him, but. Man, my goodness, I I was wrong. I was very much wrong. Um, we make a couple of subs just before we talk about James Tavernier's goal. Um, Rice and Lammers come on for Sima and Sifuentes. Uh, right of 88 minutes, not a lot of time for them to have impact on the game. Um, Sifuentes, mate, he's another one that's kind of raising questions for me. I thought, again, he was poor today. I don't really think he was in the game at all. Um, he's another one that I've... Not written off, that's the, the wrong term, but I have my reservations about. Um, I know what you're saying about the Fuentes mm-hmm. because the, the midfield three, I, we didn't really do anything. I know we, I think we ended up having like 70 odd percent possession. I think like our past success rate was about 89 percent or something around that kind of region, but it, it didn't feel like it. Mm. Um, stats sometimes you look at like you look at stats for a Rangers game and you go, Oh, they must have been very convincing. No, <laughs> you sit and watch no. it, watch it on the telly and or at, at Ibrox, and you're like, no, not not convincing at all. No, I, I, he wasn't brilliant, but I don't think he was particularly poor. He was he's in that kind of meh kind of stage that an awful lot of Rangers players are in. Um, but again, I, I, of the summer kind of signings, Sifuentes is one that I've got a wee bit more time for because I think he's adapting to like a different type of league more than more than any of the others mm-hmm. are and. I'm still, like you say, not writing him off yet. Ben, I think he's going to be, he would have been in my team, like my team would have been Sifuentes, Raskin and probably Rice uh, mm-hmm. to start in midfield today. Um, and going forward until Cantwell and Lawrence and the likes get back, then for me right now, Sifuentes would start. Yeah, I agree. I think he, he, I, I would con- continue to persevere with him, but I just don't think he's having much impact on the game. But I look, it's probably the standard of football that we are playing just now probably isn't helping him in terms of the rest of the team round about him. Um, but I just, again, he's, he's not in the game enough for me. Uh, and then something that did raise a smile today um, was James Tavernier's goal to make it 3-0. Uh, his initial shot from outside the box is blocked and he comes on to the, the rebound. The ball's bouncing and he strikes on the volley, mate, into the top bag this is a no matter what you think of James Tavernier and I know many um, many do have their, their opinions on him this is an unbelievable strike mate even on the replay it looked even better it's a straight into the top bins mate it's an absolute peach of a finish yeah um, this was it was beautiful um, particularly like you say on the replay because it was the camera angle from behind yeah it's so After good you see uh, it and the, the way the, the ball, ball curves I mean his first effort looked good as well defender or the midfielder was it does well to kind of block it but then I the second one he just he oh, shows, a bit, he shows that bit of desire to fight for it and he goes like that, <clears> that was going in the, the first one he's like that's going in I want my shot at this and he absolutely buries it and this is this is the problem we have um, mm-hmm. what he gives you Going forward, what he gives us as an attacking presence is really good because, like, at tight, I thought Tav and Lovelace were linking up very well mm-hmm. um, before. Obviously, Lovelace went up off injured, you know, going forward very good, but then defensively, there was at points where I was like, Tav, what are you doing? Some of the crosses that Tav's been are not great, you know, respect a wee bit better, but he scores worldies like that all the time. I think on the commentary, Kenny Miller compared it to the, the Petrofac Cup final against Peter Heads. It's not as good as that because that's. My probably my favourite to have go. Yeah. Um, yeah, even though it was against um, Peter Head, <coughs> it was an absolutely gorgeous strike. Um, but yeah, this is what he, this is what he can give you two goals today. What's that? One hundred and seven, one hundred and eight goals. Uh, 
I know it's the it's the conundrum with him, mate. It really is. I still believe that he's past his best, and we should be looking for some for um to replace him um along with others within the team. And I don't think it really changes it, the opinions that we've, we've strong opinions that we've had from um from the last pod that we were doing. I still very much feel the same. But you've got to give him credit for that. Like the goals are it's a screamer. It's an absolute screamer of a goal. It's a cracker, and that's what I mean. A penalty today and a a, a goal. I, I say it's he was involved in the, the third goal as well. <clears throat> Look, I, I want James Tavney to return to form. Um, but as I say, it's it's more the other qualities that I think that people are pulling up around him that about his um about his leadership, about his his commitment, about his desire. And, um that's the, the, the inconsistencies of him. I think it's probably the bit that frustrates most people, but I say you can't kind of take away from that goal. The goal's an absolute topper. I say and it raised a wee bit of a smile, mate. As I say, we're into the international break. Now, Steve Davis should not be the next Rangers manager. I'm not. I'm not saying that for a second that he should be, but he's he's managed to get the win today. And as I say, the next time that we go into a competitive game, I fully expect a manager, a new manager, to be in place. As I say, Scotia, I don't think today fixes anything. I don't think it makes everything okay all of a sudden. But at the end of the day, we asked Rangers. It was essential for Rangers to get three points today, and they've done it. Yeah, I'm like, I, I agree with you there that it doesn't change anything. I don't even know if a defeat would have changed anything today if we mm-hmm. could go out and get beaten or drop points. It wouldn't change the mood because we all know kind of what the issues are. It's not that like they're going to change. In fact, it's, it would be typical of this Rangers team to start playing well now that they've kind of fucked everything up and there's no... Mm-hmm. looks like the league looks like it's gone. Although it was... Um, I think Biggie and Crocker in the commentary saying, like, well, that, that second goal or the third goal guarantees that Rangers are ahead of St Mirren in second place on goal difference and we're sitting in October um, so we need to give credit to St Mirren for the way that they've kind of started the season um, obviously they send it off changed things but it changed the game for them but it doesn't change anything for me the win you know we've won um, and at the international break we've still got the same issues it's not like a win today's changed that yeah, I agree, mate. So that way it's not changed that at all. Um, it's not changed that at all. And as I say, it's just we're in an international break now, saying the, the search for the permanent manager continues. Um, we're hoping that something will happen um, sooner rather than later. You're out of the names linked, mate. I know, obviously, you've not been on in a way. Out of the names linked, is them standing out for you? Um, honestly, not really. Um, I've kind of been down, down this road before. There's no obvious standout candidate. I, I know Newton. It's been linked again. He's con- continuously been linked, but I think he was linked the first time Gerard went away, and he's been linked to the Celtic job as well. And um, when they've been like before Postecoglou and then before Rogers came in, um, Newton's won. But I don't know if he's he's still at Bodo Glimt. It was maybe a couple of seasons ago that he was really eye catching. He plays that four three three, which for me is a bit of a worry because it means then <laughs> Tav and Barisic are mm-hmm. you know pivotal to that and potentially, but. Um, Ah, there's no obvious standout for me at the moment. Nah, we we'll just need we need to wait and see. See everybody's going to be linked for the job over the next few days as the people mm-hmm. try and whittle down who the the short list is, um, or who the 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 final stages of the the process who the who the oh, people well, are. Well, I should say Carney is. Well, thankfully it's been confirmed, but I would have been raging if it had been Frank Lampard. Same, I, I would human. not have been I would happy, have been mate. If it had been Frank Lampard, and I think every single Rangers fan would have been like that. Wanted him yeah. as a player, maybe. The first time, like when he was at Derby and he was doing quite well with Derby, maybe take him then. But no, for me, it's like, no, thank you. Done all right with Chelsea at one point as well for a, a period, and then was told to I uh, not play the way that he wanted to play, play the way Abramovich wanted to play. But um, yeah, no, I wouldn't have been happy if it would have been him. Yeah, same. I would not have been chuffed if it would have been him. But uh, yeah, so I say we're into an international break now and I've a look forward to them, but this one I'm actually quite looking forward to having a wee break from Rangers over the way this past month has been anyway. Um, Scotia, for today, mate, good to have you back. Thanks for coming on and joining me and helping me through with my uh, my hangover podcast, mate. I appreciate it. Yeah, with your hangover, you're not giving man of the match to anyone today, no? Oh, man of the match, yes, you do that. <laughs> yeah, do that. Who's your man of the match? Yeah, do that. <laughs> Uh, I said, okay, I've got kind of four names. There's a, no absolute standout brilliant player. Four names I've got noted down. Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to give it to Tav just for the two goals that you know the penalty and the goal. Um, and I, I did, did think he was linking up well with Lovelace, poor defensively. But I think I don't usually give it to goal scorers, like if for that only reason. But I think today I'm just going to give it for the. 
for the two goals give it to Dav Fair enough mate I, I don't know who my man of the match is to be completely honest I thought Shima was decent as I say I think he, he he's going to say take, had, taking a bit of step up I thought Raskin was alright as well I thought he, he looked busy anyway um, a lot of a lot of effort put in by him but uh, I'll give it to Seema for his goal for the goal that pretty much won us the game anyway because that was going to put it com- yeah. out of the out of the reach of 10 man St Murren so yes uh, could have been a lot more difficult uh, was- today could have been could have been a bit of a could have been a bit of a um, a bit of a stick in the road uh, a bit of a spanner on the works for Rangers today um, but I, I think the show, obviously the sending off changed the, the game and from there Rangers Controlled it, yes, to an extent. Was it good to watch? No, it was not good to watch at all. But um, you've got to, I suppose, take positives in the fact that we've managed to get three points, and um, which a, a game that could have been a lot more tricky for us. Final thoughts, mate? Yeah, um, I agree with that. Um, and, and just in terms of the man of the match, the other two players that were kind of in my consideration were um, the two youngsters, McCausland and Lovelace. Like I say, they, mm-hmm. you know, not nothing standing out, but and obviously because of the, you know, Lovelace was only on for what about thirty minutes or mm-hmm. so, or forty minutes. Um, he was on for so like they only could kind of get like a half each. Um, but I thought they were both. Um, they looked pro- again, looked promising. Doesn't look like it'll phase them playing in the first team. So there's no reason not to when we come back again against um, Hibs um, after the international break. Yeah, I agree, mate. I do. I agree. I don't think they've look, they look out of place at all. They look very much ready for the step up, mate. Uh, I didn't mention, I probably should have, mate, the Union Bears had get the a banner. Heartless, passionless, leaders, leaderless, uh, not fit to wear our colours. I suppose that kind of sums up how we've all been feeling, I think, recently. Um, yeah. Obviously, but, uh, what's his name? Bisgrove was there today. God's sake, man, you can tell I'm rough. Uh, Bisgrove was there today. <laughs> so he's going to know fine well what's at, st- what's at stake here, um, what's at stake and what's, what what we expect to happen as fans over this next international break. Um, we, we fully expect this appointment to go correctly. But yes, Scotia, um, before I keep rambling on, thank you very much for today, mate. No, thank you. It's good good to be back. Um, I, I'll be here going forward for them. Um... Well, it's obviously the international break. In fact, it's something I said to you. It's like I'm actually more excited to watch Scotland games, even though we'll probably get horsed off in Spain and France than I am uh, Rangers right now. And I don't think that's well, not maybe happened once or twice, but no often. And that's Kenny. That's like you say, where we are with Rangers right now. I'm looking forward to watching East Enders, mate, more than anything else. <laughs> uh, I think, as I, as I say, I'm not, I, today was just a, a, a right slog. But no, I appreciate it, mate. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, I say we're on international break. Not 100% sure how things are going to look over the international break. We'll still be back, of course we will. There'll still be podcasts, but I've not really decided on the schedule yet. And today's probably not the best day for it. I need to go and get a McDonald's and have a lie down, probably. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And we'll speak to you next time. We are Clawback. 22 the Rangers podcast cheers everybody